We live in uncertain times, don't we? Many people feel anxiety when they hear about all of the troubles in our world and society. This is certainly not something unique to this generation. Every generation has faced its share of tribulations and hardships. Maybe it's more pronounced today because of how fast news travels around the world through media and social media, etc. Either way, the Holy Church has a consoling message and practical advice for anyone suffering from anxiety. Let's find out together. Hello and welcome. My name is Father Moses Saman and I am the priest of St. Gregory American Coptic Orthodox Church in beautiful Southern California. We are a small parish in the Diocese of Los Angeles with a focus on spiritual growth and education in a loving community. Our services are entirely in English and accessible to everyone. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our page and join our community. Today I would like to discuss a very important topic that impacts everyone, anxiety. Anxiety is dangerous because it can be paralyzing. The word anxiety has its root in a Latin word that means to choke. A thing is choking when the outlet is blocked, and this is the cause of anxiety when there is no outlet for our worries and fears. When we don't deal with our anxieties in the right way, they become repressed and more likely to plunge us into the depth of depression. The world tells us that we should forget our anxieties and enjoy ourselves, not realizing that this is spiritually and psychologically about the worst thing we can do with our anxieties. If we try to carry them alone or we try to drown them out in worldly pleasures, they literally choke us. The presence of unresolved anxiety in our lives can also be an indication that something is wrong in our spiritual lives. The Greek Orthodox elder St. Paisios said, where there is anxiety and despair, there is a demonic spiritual life. You should not feel anxiety about anything at all. Anxiety comes from the devil. Wherever you see anxiety, you must know that the devil has been at work. So how can we cope with anxiety, especially in light of all that is happening around us? In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, St. Paul says, Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, and whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. We should memorize these verses because in times of need they will be of tremendous use to us. How can St. Paul tell us, have no anxiety about anything? These words may feel unrealistic and impractical at first glance. How can someone diagnosed with a serious illness or one constantly in fear of an illness like COVID-19 not be anxious? Even in daily life, how can students not be anxious when midterms or college applications come around? Just going to work and dealing with all of the issues there can make us anxious. So how can we not be anxious when we live in the age of anxiety? Yet the reality is St. Paul tells us, have no anxiety about anything. He didn't write these words at a time when all was well in his life. In fact, he wrote them from his prison cell in Rome. That fact make these words even more remarkable because St. Paul faced more in his life from shipwrecks to imprisonment to persecution and martyrdom. He faced more than most of us. He certainly didn't live a life of comfort. St. Paul tells us, have no anxiety about anything. And then he goes on to give us the secret to overcoming anxiety. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. There it is. We should let our requests, our needs, our fears be made known to God. In everything, he says. In other words, we can speak to God about absolutely anything that is troubling us with the knowledge that He cares for us. 
In the Old Testament, there is a beautiful example of this in the life of Hezekiah. Hezekiah received a very disturbing letter from his enemy. It was the kind of letter that would cause a person much anxiety. We read, And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. So whatever our invading anxiety is, we can always do as Hezekiah did, spread it before the Lord in prayer. In the New Testament, our Lord Jesus Christ teaches us, let not your hearts be troubled. He goes on to give us the secret of a trouble-free heart. He says, believe in God, believe also in me. So we should trust God completely and spread it all out before him in prayer. We must be careful to understand these verses because they don't mean we ought to be careless and apathetic in our lives. There are many things we ought to care about, the most important being our salvation. But these verses tell us that once we have done all we can about these matters, we are to place them before God in prayer. In the earthly life of our Savior, we learn valuable lessons on how to deal with anxiety. Our Lord was certainly anxious on the night before his crucifixion when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was so anxious that his sweat became as great drops of blood as he prayed to the Father. Now my soul is troubled, Father. Save me from this hour. Remove this cup from me. At this time, our Lord manifested to us how we should pray in times of anxiety. Subsequently, he prayed and said, Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done, Heavenly Father. This is the moment that he surrendered his anxiety to his Father in prayer. And what was the result? We see in the subsequent terrible events that, even though our Lord greatly suffered, he maintained peace. His first words on the Holy Cross were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's hard for us to imagine such peace in the midst of a great tribulation, but this was indeed the fruit of our Lord's prayer to his Father at the time of anxiety. We can incorporate these three steps in our lives as well. Once again, they are number one, prayer. To pray to our Heavenly Father in times of anxiety. And number two, to surrender to the will of God, to say to him, not as I will, but as you will, O Lord. And third, peace. The fruit of doing this will be a peace that only God can provide, a peace that will fill our hearts and help us to get through whatever it is that is causing us this anxiety. May God help each and every one of us to offer our anxieties and our cares to him in prayer as Hezekiah did, to submit our will to his will as our Lord Jesus Christ modeled for us in the Garden of Gethsemane, and to receive the peace that can only come from above. And glory be to God forever. Amen.